What's up YouTube? Some really big news from the video gaming world and that is Dawn of War 3 announcement trailer just dropped a few days ago. Hold on. My balls are saggy. My balls are itchy. Anyway, uh, I'm really excited about it because I am a long time Warhammer 40,000 fan. This is like, this isn't even the whole stack, okay? And uh, as a person who's played Dawn of War for a very long time, I'm looking forward to the new game as a continuation of the series. And uh, I want to talk, uh, I want to make this really quick video to talk about five things that should be in the upcoming Dawn of War game. I'm, re I'm revving my hype train engines. Now, first of all, what is Dawn of War? Dawn of War is an RTS real-time strategy game set in a rich, futuristic sci-fi science fantasy, actually. The setting is called Warhammer 40,000 fictional universe, and it's a really awesome universe with a lot of crazy, over-the-top action, combat, and warfare between humanity and a lot of different alien races and some races that are just straight up originate from the deepest darkest pits of hell shout out to my main boys the chaos space marines my favorite faction inside the entire game the the universe is characterized as being very grim dark as the fans say which is a, f a phrase to denote the grim and dark future of the 41st millennium of course being a franchise that originates from the british isles a place that only gets five days of summer throughout an entire year so understandably you do get a very bleak setting indeed in fact allow a f another brit to explain exactly what warhammer 40k warhammer 40,000 is generally about basically life sucks there's only war and you're probably going to get eaten by tyranids have fun now warhammer has been one of my biggest fandoms alongside star wars and battletech the gameplay you are seeing right now is from the very first Dawn of War game released in 2004. 2004, it's more than 10 years ago. I, I really feel super, super duper old. I remember this game released and, and I was in like in sixth grade or something like that. Uh, now Come I'm on. playing a modded version called Firestorm over Kaurava, which is a modded version of the Dawn of War Soulstorm game. Now I've been playing Dawn of War on and off for a very long time. Uh, and there is a sequel called Dawn of War 2, but we do not speak about the sequel around these parts. Not because it wasn't good or anything, but because it just wasn't my cup of tea. It was very much more an action RPG compared uh, rather than, than a traditional RTS. And the modding community kind of didn't really pick up for that game. And being a PC Master Race gamer, you really need a modding community to make a game last throughout the ages. Now, as a longtime fan of Warhammer 40k, Dawn of War was what got me into the 40k back in the day. What got me into the 40k universe. And since I've read a ton of the books... First stack. God damn! Second stack. And, and that's, that's just... I just made it rain. And that's not all, okay? Oh, here's, here's Dawn of War, the book. And also, I, I collect some of the miniatures. Uh, for example, this is my Space Marine chapter. He's one of my veteran sergeants with a Storm Bolter and Chainsword. This is my Chaos Lord with Lightning Claws. And like, he's holding a Space Marine head. Kind of like a Hamlet. He's doing a Hamlet. And uh, one more guy. This is my Kasserkin Sergeant, Stormtrooper kind of guy. So yeah, I collect the figures and I've been following the Warhammer 40k universe for a long time. I think I'm qualified to, enough to talk about 5 things the fans would demand from Dawn of War 3 since it's now confirmed we are getting one. And it's about damn time... No wait, it's like in Starcraft, like... It's about time... Well, that's a different kind of Space Marine, but yeah, people say that the Warhammer 40k is one of the original Space Marines and the Warhammer 40k Tyranids are actually one of the original extragalactic bugs. You know, there are a lot of extragalactic bugs. You have Starship Troopers. Oh, Starship Troopers probably first because that's, that's really, really old. But, but Warhammer 40k definitely was there to invent the concept of a, an armored Space Marine type character. That's their contribution towards geek fiction in the geek kingdom. Now, the trailer dropped a few days ago. As you can see it from my side over there. It's playing right there. And from it, we currently know about two things. I'm going to go clean up those books now. 
I mean, these aren't even all my books. I've generally collected... Shit. I've generally collected a lot more over the years, but, you know, they get lent out and I never get them back. I remember in, like, middle school, Warhammer was, like, on my mind all the time because, like, I didn't really hit puberty until I was 20 plus. <laughs> Forever young, you know. Let's see if I can stack these books all the way to the top of the of the video. I'm stacking books like I'm. If I could stack this much paper instead of stacking this much books, then I could be like a rapper. But yeah, Warhammer 40k. This is the Tower of Power. Wait, wait I can. Oh sh. Now we can deduce about two things I think gotcha, from bitch. the trailer that was released, and that is number one. There will be, upon launch, initially three factions or races within the game. This, those are the Space Marines, which are like those guys I just showed you, just not genetically engineered super soldiers in like power armor. Uh, orcs, your typical fantasy style orcs, but with a K, but given a more gritty sci-fi like machine guns, daka 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 style, style feel to it. And the Eldar, which are um, essentially space elves. And number two, what I noticed from the trailer is that like gore and dismemberment, like Black Ops 3 in the first Black Ops Call of Duty style gore, like bits and body pieces falling everywhere, will probably be in the game because in the trailer, you can see the trailer over there, uh, we see the Space Marines, which is still the Blood Ravens because it, the game is being developed by Relic. The Blood Ravens are essentially the, the ch Space Marine chapter designed specifically so Relic could have a Space Marine chapter to base the game on. You see the Blood Ravens really getting shit on. I mean, I haven't seen Space Marines getting shit on this hard ever. I mean, like they got arms getting taken off and getting split apart by these orc uh, killer cans or like that, or something like that. I don't know. But yeah, uh, onto the five things that as a fan of the 40k universe and as a long time person who's played Dawn of War, the number one thing, numero uno thing that, I, that we would demand from a Dawn of War 3 and that is a return to Dawn of War 1 style gameplay. And this is probably the most important thing on this list. Dawn of War 1 had a much, the, the original Dawn of War, had a much larger scale of battle and the armies that you can actually play in the game uh, the unit counts were a lot higher compared to dawn of war 2 and of course the units were full squads of like 10 guys and in dawn of war 2 i remember it was like one marine squads about three or four i don't know it's like not as many and dawn of war 2 it was more about micromanaging skills and abilities now in dawn of war 3 we want like at least two to three full squads as as you're seeing in the gameplay here against probably an equivalent number of that force and more vehicles would be nice but not too many just the tip as i like to say just the tip of epic 40k or armageddon level conflicts now fans would know what that would, that would mean and bigger maps would be better the gameplay you are seeing right now is like a six player skirmish free for all. Also show some gameplay from like an eight player skirmish. Now one thing that I like to do when playing the original Dawn of War is to have a mixed faction skirmish and that is you take each race and up to eight players on the map at the same time. I think that's really fun because you get a lot of variety to the skirmish. Uh, the footage you're watching right now is a mix mixed faction skirmish. We've got like Eldar, Orcs, SOBs. Sisters of Battle and Chaos and Space Marines. I, I end up winning the game via the take and hold victory condition for the critical locations and, and I get my entire army annihilated. Now it's it's moments like these that really, really bring the 40k universe kicking and screaming into life in, in all of its glory. Now Dawn of War 2 had a lot of cool action RPG elements to it which are welcome in the upcoming game but if the game itself does not match the scale of the original Dawn of War, which is more than 10 years old at this point, old but gold, <laughs> and makes me feel old thinking about it. Uh, what's the point, right? Because we really, the fans, I think, would like to see a return to that real RTS style of game instead of the action RPG style of game. Now, uh, I'm playing the FOK mod right now, which does have some basic RPG unit leveling up elements in it, but it can be turned on and off if you want it to it's called the heroes mode and it's a testament to the skill of modding community that you can actually put this a feature like that inside a game and of course the firestorm fok mod is is um, it's a work in progress and it's 
taken a very it's it's a long work in progress it's been going on for like almost as old as the game i remember playing fok in like 2010 right after my spm examinations finished and it was really awesome another thing they should also bring back is base building the base building in dawn of war 2 was very minimalistic you only had like one or two like structures there at one end of the map and your enemy would have like two or three structures one or two structures on the other end of the map and it didn't really make the maps feel big it felt more like an arena dawn of war 2 maps felt more like an arena in the original dawn of war you had maps that were actually arenas where the players would be placed even spaces around each other and that felt like a battle but it felt like an open battleground it felt like you could still move al along different paths but in in dawn of war 2 to me the maps just felt like you had your side and the enemy had their side you just meet in the middle and it felt very much like a battle arena like sort of like a dota yeah now numero dos what we would want from the upcoming dawn of war is more races and more factions now based on what we know so far we're getting space marines orcs and eldar which is a total of three races which in my opinion is a bit of a disappointment because the original game shipped with four races you had the space marines orcs eldar plus the chaos faction which I, I i'm a big fan of chaos because like there's nothing like being a renegade space marine and just going to town on the galaxy and uh the dawn of war website pretty much confirmed this with uh you have like these three heads if you go to the website dawnofwar.com war.com which is still the, the same domain name as the original game of course as usual as per the previous two games more races will probably be added i'm going to turn this music down as time goes on with expansion packs and based on another popular warhammer 40k game right now that is ba battlefleet gothic we know there is probably going to be a lot more diversity and specialization because in battlefleet gothic you have one race and that one race could probably like specialize into four different specializations like uh chaos can specialize in oh chaos is not coming for dawn of war 3 ha <laughs> can specialize into Zinc, Nurgle, Corn, and Slanesh. Don't ask me how I know that. I'm a nerd, yo. As evident by the stack of books. And like Space Mar uh the Imperial Fleet could like specialize in Space Marines, Mechanicus, Imperial Navy, and whatever. So they, they could go with some something like that as well. Because uh, another thing is we saw in the trailer that there were Imperial Knight Titans, is those big huge lumbering war machines which aren't the only war machines inside the entire game there are also like dreadnoughts and wraith knights and stuff like that and uh which those imperial knights aren't native to the space marine faction so i'm pretty sure they might like improve their the diversity of, of the possible units you could use now the thing about warhammer in general now a lot of people know this know this is because you have such a rich universe and backstory to pull from you just people who play the game just can't help wanting more and more from the games and i know that fans always want this and the game developers have a hard time of satisfying this desire for variety that fans always have for the warhammer 40k universe now the number three thing that would be welcome in dawn of war Tres, of course is like uh customization for your army and war gear options of course an army painter is a must the more painter the better whether it's ultramarines or angry marines all players will want to customize their army in in the most unique way as possible tailoring it to their their style and gameplay you, you, you do have a lot of in the fluff of warhammer 40k they, they've made it in such a way that you can either design your own army with their own backstory or you can go with a lot of like the preset this guy right here or this guy right here which are both space marines i mean it is it comes from a franchise centered on painting tiny little plastic miniatures it's pretty evident that an, ar an extensive army painter would be necessary 
Now, War Gear selection is also a big must. Hero characters should be able to take special equipment and weapons. In the base game for Dawn of War, it was generally very linear, but mods like FOK that I'm showing you right now that I'm playing made it a lot better. You could choose more custom specialized firearms and swords for your commanders uh, and unit commanders, which is pretty awesome, like your captains and whatnot. Now, Dawn of War 2 got War Gear customization to a whole nother level but it was more focused like I said on the RPG elements where you would level up one guy with a heavy bolter so he could be good enough just to shit on everyone else and this was cool for Dawn of War 2 but I, I think that if you want to bring it back to the roots of Dawn of War uh, it wouldn't be it would be awesome but you know not the whole not the main focus of the game I think Dawn of War 3 should focus the war gear and customization to allow for more tactical options between units, between squads and whatnot. And like, for example, you want to be able to use grenades and like the frag and crack grenades, but we don't need like a level 1000 holy hand grenade of devourer of worlds type of shit unless it's on a major character, that kind of stuff. Numero 4. Le numero 4. The fourth thing that would be really awesome in Dawn of War 3 is like closer to codex elements of gameplay and a challenging AI to pit that shit against. Now, well, that's actually two things, but it's my video, so you can go eat a dick. For those of us who live and breathe, don't lick this stack of books. <laughs> For those of us who live and breathe in the 40k universe, we generally know how the unit, the units and the guns stack up against each other. We have a feel of how a squad of space marines how would they fare against a, a mob of orcs in like ranged combat and in melee combat? I could recite the stat line of a space marine off the back of my hand. 4444141183. Yeah, I'm a nerd. And since a lot of the fans are very familiar with the lore and fluff, we know how the fights would go on and, and we know what kind of decisions we generally make on the battlefield. And I think if the game devs could somehow implement a more like closer to the tabletop and closer to the uh, actual fluff rule set it, it'd be it would make the game more immersive I, I know that it's i know it's a video game and the developers have their own freedom and leeway the ultimate objective is to design a video game it's not gonna it's not gonna sell if it's not fun but i think that if they balance the game towards a closer to codex rule set as been done in the the mod that I'm playing right now, that would help make the game more immersive and engaging. Not just to us who who play, who are major fans, but also those who want to get into the game itself. Um, yeah. Now the last and final thing to wrap it all up and make an awesome Dawn of War 3 would be like some really sick and awesome killer close combat sync kill animations and of course we know this is going to be in the game because it is after all dawn of war it is after all warhammer 40k but a lot of focus should go into making these kill sync animations really awesome and immersive for the player and, and imagine we could what we could do with today's technology and the graphics and those on those killer animation on the kill sync animations i've tried to put a few inside this video try to get like some close-ups of the fighting and a, a, a big part of dawn of war that they originally marketed the game with was the close combat the rich and detailed fighting animations when two characters are just fighting each other and close combat is an important part of 40k even though it's a sci-fi setting with a lot of pew 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 lasers and stuff you still have people wielding like swords and literally war hammers but they are called thunder hammers and Pist like a pistol in one hand and a sword in another hand like hold on this guy yeah like a pistol in one hand and a sword in the other hand and which on the modern battlefield would seem very impractical and wonky but in 40k dawn of war it could pretty much save your life in a lot of the books really like there there are moments where like these two badass awesome characters would just be in the midst of a raging battle around them and then they'd look at the other guy and say you're mine and then they just fight and the fight would end with one of one character getting shish kebabbed or like gruesomely fatality by the other character so close combat duels and their resulting coup de gras coup de grace animations should be a big part of the game and they should make it competitive because you want people to try to pull off these sick 
you know, it is an RTS and sometimes you do end up getting drowned out in a lot of ranged combat, but you should put these in the game because you want your players to pull off these feats of skill, try to get these killer close combat animations. Now, I think close combat's really important if they can do it well for like the Eldar, which like feature, they're, they're like a race of space elves. How they fight is they're like always flipping and pin wheeling and cartwheeling everywhere and just jumping over people and slicing off heads. And especially like the Eldar had these guys called the Harlequins and they're known for like acrobatic close combat and stuff. So that's really sick and that would be really awesome to see. Imagine if they had like a, a sub-faction of Harlequins for the Eldar in Dawn of War 3. That would be awesome. So those are the five things that I look forward to being in Dawn of War 3. And of course, a additionally, a Dan Abnett written storyline also wouldn't be too much to ask for. Uh, Dan Abnett is awesome. He's an awesome writer. I think his fiction reads like candy. Like his writing and his fiction, it's very easy to digest. It's like you get swept away, but you know that it's it's just about war and killing stuff. It won't reveal to you any important philosophy like uh, Dostoy Tolstoy or who wrote The Brothers Karamazov. You know those Russian novelist guys, but Dan Abnett, man, he's... If you want an escape for a day to read about some really sick stuff, read a Dan Abnett book. He's written for Guardians of the... Did I mention that he's written for Guardians of the Galaxy? Yeah. So those are the five things we look forward to. Now, the game's being developed by Relic, as usual, so the series would probably be in good hands. It's been being published by Sega this time, since THQ went down the crapper with... With nothing short of the fandom of thousands and thousands of people to satisfy, it should be really easy to make a game that is both fun and pays righteous tribute to the rich Warhammer 40,000 world that it's set in, right? Should be easy, right? Oh, I can hear the fanboys and the angry mob getting ready. Anyway, my name is Son of Terra 92 on the Technologics channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see y'all next time.